What's up, Collider fans? Welcome back to a victorious scoreboard. Now, you would think I'd probably be here win or lose, but everybody knows I'm always a winner, especially when it comes to awards season. Perry knows firsthand because we've competed in many an Oscar ballot. Grace knows because she just knows when you deal with TV and you deal with predictions, we're always winning here at Collider. Uh, I'd like to give a special shout out to John Roca, who went out on a limb <laughs> and, and bet on terrible picks that we knew would be wrong, and that's why he is not sitting here right now. Uh, I'm sitting here with the lovely Perry Nemiroff. What's up, Perry? I like winning. And Grace Hancock. I wear my pajamas. <laughs> we went undefeated in the Golden Globes, I, and I tweeted it out yesterday. It was They were easy picks to make, but that shouldn't take away from the amazing year of television we had. There were just clear winners in this particular award show. Uh, we all won. We nailed everything. I want to give a special shout out. Hold on, let me pull up my phone here. I want to shout out to oh, Rafael yeah. Sanchez, who jammed in my uh, Twitter feed. <laughs> Claire Foy is definitely going to win. You're all idiots. And guess what? Elizabeth Moss won. Uh, so suck it, God Rafael Sanchez. All right, so like, uh, let's go through the winners here. Winners, uh, we all picked Big Little Lies for Best Limited Series TV oh, Movie, so happy. which we knew that they would clear up. They like, won a lot, They too. won everything. Yeah. There was a really funny tweet from like a fake account that was like, it's great to see Alexander Skarsgård winning for such a likable man. Um, <laughs> they had like a presence there, too. Yes. It's, yeah. Maybe it was just because of where they were sitting, but there was something about the Big Little Lies group where it didn't matter what was going on. They were front and center, and also you always felt the love amongst that group yeah. every time they did win something. They yeah, were so absolutely. happy for each other. And Reese Witherspoon introduced Oprah for the Cecil B. to me. I mean, yeah. like, come on. Uh, <laughs> Cecil B. to me. Cecil B. to whatever. I think it's, Cecil. it's fine. Oh, no. Right along. All right. Best actress, musical, or comedy. Rachel Brosnahan wins for oh. Mrs. Maisel. We talked about the beginning of the show. She deserved to win. There were some really good people in this. I mean, if my second choice would have gone to Alison Brie and Glow, but there was clearly one person above and beyond in this whole thing, and her speech was awesome. Yeah, it was so cute. I love when she was like, oh, you're Oprah. Hello. Like, I was like, you're adorable. <laughs> yeah. And like I said earlier on, when we first started talking about this, her role was the, was the toughest. Like, yes. I'm sorry, but it was. Like, she's yeah. playing, she's in a time period. She has a dialect. She has a whole family of Jewish people like she has to be a comic like I mean there was so many layers to that character it was the toughest performance and she absolutely nailed it yeah she is just one of my favorite actresses right now because yeah. obviously I love the show but then to see someone get up there and have the right balance of heart and professionalism right. That's that's the sign of somebody who's going to go a long way. So I'm just so happy for I her. I can't recommend this show highly enough, and I pushed you on it. And you were like, I'm happy you did. I'm happy, I, break? I'm happy I took one. your 2017 videos very seriously. There Between that and American Vandal, I'm in good shape right now. <gasps> Yay! Go. All right, best actor, musical, or comedy is he's on Sorry for Master of None. There, this was, there were good nominees here but there was a great nominee in this in this category mm -hmm. and it was Aziz he stood out above all of these um, even as much as John Roca wants to say I love dick for Kevin Bacon <laughs> um, no uh, so Aziz I'm sorry obviously we all picked him uh, yeah. and his speech was fantastic he called out his parents I mean it was so really sweet. just a sweet thing but also kind of nice in the fact that he was like I didn't want to lose this twice. <laughs> yeah. Like, kind of a cool well, thing. Well, sure. And also, like, I hope that everybody is well aware how involved he is with the production, with the writing. Like, it, it, that's his show. Yep. It's not just that he's doing a great performance. He's running that whole ship. So it's mm -hmm. 10 times more impressive. It makes him, in my opinion, 10 times more deserving of the award. Yeah, it's a, for all these reasons why he became the front runner when you're doing a prediction list like this. Yep. It seemed like he was the most likely to win, especially given his past with the show. And I'm glad his moment finally came. Yeah. Uh, let's do best actress drama. Uh, Elizabeth Moss. This was, again, a clear cut. I will mm. say, when they cut to Catherine Langford in the crowd, that girl was looking good last night. My <laughs> goodness. I don't know. I mean, that show is dark. But they, I mean, uh, listen, Elizabeth Moss was the clear winner here, as much as Raphael Sanchez wanted to say, Claire Foy. Um, <laughs> listen, Handmaid's Tale is so relevant right now. It's yeah. so relevant. Um, so clear winner, Elizabeth Moss. Yeah, I mean, I, I didn't think that there was any question, not that there weren't amazing performances. It was a tough category like all of them. But again, it is like, unfortunately very relevant. It's kind of like, oh, you know, it's that kind of storytelling that's really hitting a chord specifically right now. So it's a timely win and a, and a deserved win. I said it when we did the actual prediction video, my two biggest votes were going for Miss Maisel and Handmaid's Tale. And the HFPA has a habit of right. awarding things that are in their first season. And so not only do you have two shows that are freaking fantastic and deserving of these honors, but yeah. then they fit the bill as well. So it really did seem like everything was pointing towards these two shows being the big winner across the board. Uh, and a special shout out to her speech. Elizabeth Moss's speech was fantastic. 
Really, really well done. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, best actor drama, Sterling K. Brown. This was clear in a way. Here's the thing. Freddie Highmore, put that aside. <laughs> Jason Bateman. They were the only two, there was like the only two new ones. Jason Bateman in Ozark. Um, and, and Sterling K. Brown and This Is Us. I mean, he wins the Emmy, but again, Sterling K. Brown is that show. Mm -hmm. It's gotten a little schmaltzy at points, but without Sterling K. Brown, that show, it. He's, the, he's browning it. Yeah. Yeah. And he, he had the same kind of formula to his speech, too, where it was like perfectly heartfelt and funny yeah. and just very like him. Like you felt like you got a little snippet of who he is yeah. and it just made you love him even more. And I'm thrilled. And yeah, Dan it, Fogelman even more. It's another case <laughs> yeah. where we know he's an Emmy winner. He hasn't won a Golden Globe. Mm -hmm. This was his time. And I think the Hollywood Foreign Press knew it. Yeah. Yeah. Best TV series, musical, or comedy. We've said enough about Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. We can't say anything more. It's we perfect. picked it. It's done. It's amazing. Again, if you're not watching it and you haven't watched it, stop everything you're doing. And like just everybody watch it. can love that show. Yeah, My 100%. dad would like that show. My boyfriend would like that show. You like that show. Rat likes that show. It's There's awesome. nothing to not like. Correct. Uh, best TV series drama. Now this was probably the toughest category to pick, I think, uh, because I think a lot of people wanted to pick Game of Thrones, uh, but. Handmaid's Tale, again, in the times that we're living in and, right. how, and, and how the theme of this show was with everybody in black and this whole thing, Handmaid's Tale was the, the clear favorite. And like you said, first seasons of things. Yeah, that's, um, I mean, that's really what separates it, you know, statistically, I don't know what you want to call it, from everything else in this group. It's, mm -hmm. it's the only first timer in there. And the only other one that I was thinking maybe could have stolen it is The Crown. Mm -hmm. But really, once, once Elizabeth Moss had won, I'm like, well, that's done. Yeah, 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 exactly. That's yeah. it, it's over. And I'm happier that it won over Game of Thrones, even though maybe in my personal opinion, I do maybe think that Game of Thrones is more my favorite show between yeah. the two, but also Handmaid's Tale is timely storytelling and also this like massive cast, a lot of like female talent. I, I felt like that was the more effective win, if that makes sense. Like I'm happier that Handmaid's got it, even though I personally like Game of Thrones more. And the Fines Brothers beard is just on point. Gotta, Always. Gotta appreciate it. All right, that's our Collider Scoreboard, Golden Globes TV edition. You're looking at the three winners, Perry Nemiroff, Grace Hancock, Josh McCuga. Uh, we were undefeated. If you were undefeated, let us know. Let us know if you like Collider Scoreboard, and uh, we'll see you next time. Subscribe, like, comment, tell everybody about the channel. Golden Globes, we'll see you at the Oscars.